Nagpur for a welcome address and a brief institute overview. Over to you, sir. Sir, you are muted. Uh, Wage, sir, you are muted. Please unmute yourself. friends it is a proud moment for we faculty members from yashwantra chavan college of engineering nagpur that we get this opportunity to organize this webinar for the pg student as well as the faculty members i take this Seven years. It is an autonomous institution offering eight undergraduate programs with intake of twelve hundred students per year, six postgraduate program with intake of hundred and fifteen, and all the department they are the approved research center to carry out the PhD work. all the programs they are accredited by national board of accreditation like abet in usa so in india the accreditation agency is nba new delhi so all programs they are accredited by nba similarly our institution is also accredited by national assessment and accreditation council bangalore with grade a <coughs> uh, in our country the all the institutions including iits institute of eminence autonomous colleges they are ranked and i am glad to inform you that our institution is ranked within 150 from last 5 years friends as on date through our research center 136 research scholars they have completed their phd and 44 research scholars they are pursuing their phd program as on date on campus 5000 student they are studying in undergraduate program postgraduate program and phd program once again i thank all the research person for joining this webinar and delivering the, their talk on robotic surgery and water crisis analysis similarly the shraddha ma'am she will deliver the third session on opportunities at wayne state university for the knowledge of our people from wayne state university in last 5 year six student they have did their post graduation from your university my own son who is now working at detroit he also completed his ms in industrial engineering in 2018 from wayne state university so with this once again i welcome you all to this webinar and i am very much confident that the today's session in this webinar will be highly knowledgeable and it will be a great learning to each one of us thank you thank you very much uh, thank you so much sir uh, uh, thank you wage sir 
Now, uh, without much delay, now I would like to introduce today's experts. The very first, uh, we have with us a senior and experienced professor from Wayne State University in Detroit, Professor Ivan uh, Evrutsi. He is an associate professor and program director, electrical and computer engineering. He received his PhD in physics and mathematics with emphasis on physical and quantum electronics from General Physics Institute, Moscow, Russia in 1988. He is also a postdoctoral fellow of Norton Institute of Emerging Technologies, University of Toronto. And he's also a visiting scientist at Air Force Research Lab, uh, has gone Air Force Base, Massachusetts uh, in the year 2009. His main research interest includes uh, micro and nano scale photonics, laser physics, optoelectronics, integrated optics, and his subjects of uh, particular interest are optical devices employing resonant phenomena in waveguide gritting, nanoscale photonics, and nano manufacturing technologies. So, good morning, sir, and I welcome you for today's section on behalf of Yashwantrao Chavan College of Engineering, uh, Nagpur, India. And I now request Professor Ivan to address us uh, about the WSC department uh, and the program. Programs in College of Engineering. Uh, over to you, uh, Professor Ivan. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Dulsari, for a PhD level. So that's altogether four uh, graduate uh, programs. Uh, the uh, scope of uh, uh, studies uh, uh, is defined by uh, uh, expertise of uh, our faculty, uh, and that would include uh, uh, robotics uh, and uh, embedded systems to start with. Uh, and today we'll have a presentation by uh, Dr. Abilash Pandia uh, specifically on this subject, uh, uh, also control systems, uh, uh, micro and nanoscale uh, sensors, devices, and systems, uh, uh, high performance uh, computing, uh, uh, signal processing and communication. Uh, a big uh, chunk of our work is power uh, 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 and energy engineering. Uh, uh, more recent topics uh, are introduced recently on VLSI and uh, automotive uh, electronics. The department is uh, uh, actively growing. Uh, just recently, uh, literally uh, last academic year, uh, we hired uh, three more faculty. Uh, uh, so uh, we definitely in need of more bright graduate students to uh, join our faculty in their uh, research uh, uh, labs. Uh, so with this, uh, uh, I would uh, uh, finish my introduction uh, and uh, uh, turn this to uh, professionals who tell you about specific projects uh, uh, in uh, the department and in the college. Thank you. Backwards. If we let it stagnate for 30 minutes. And this helps to understand, and we go back and resample, and this helps to understand uh, how, example of a house, um,
So this is a pretty nice linear regression showing a high correlation between the two. So it shows us that we can use these filters to um, characterize how much lead would have been exposed. The last piece here is the Legionnaire's disease. I'm not circling any one face because this is a massive project. And we had 20 faculty from uh, around the United States uh, and many students as well as residents of Flint contribute to this work. So I wanna start by just um, kind of highlighting that one of the things we do in drinking water and, and you know, very common around the world is we, we put in chlorine into our water. And that is to help to reduce the likelihood that bacteria can grow in our water once it leaves the drinking water treatment plant. And so what you see here is the concentration of free chlorine. And um, on the x-axis is the, um, the week um, going from 2013 to 2017, during the time period which we had the Flint water crisis. And so I'm only showing you um, what the chlorine levels look like in this pre-switch era. And there are eight monitoring locations that were in the drinking water system and looking at chlorine. And what you can see before they switched, the chlorine levels all kind of plotted together, right? Um, and there is this seasonal variation. Uh, chlorine tends to dip in the summer because it gets warm and kinetics speed up and so you have this chlorine thing. So then after they switch the water supply, doesn't take an environmental engineer to say there's something going on. And there's just real chaotic uh, concentrations of chlorine in the system. That's partially because they noticed low concentration of chlorine. And then the, the plant was trying to adjust for that. And they just weren't able to control the chlorine levels. And so that's where people were concerned that uh, bacteria were able to grow and people got Legionnaire's disease. After the switch, uh, federal government got involved, researchers got involved, and they started increasing the chlorine levels and trying to return to some normalcy. So what comes out of that? If we looked at the cases of Legionnaire's disease, LD, um, and we compare that to the concentration of chlorine, we do see that uh, as the chlorine concentration increases, the risk of Legionnaire's disease decreases. Now notice these are pretty small numbers. That's because Legionnaire's is still a, a, a fairly rare disease, but certainly with lower concentrations, you do get a slight increased risk. So this is showing you pre-switch and post switch. Now, if I compare to what happened when they switched, okay, um, this is uh, a dramatic increase in the risk of Legionnaire's disease. So, this is another um, piece of evidence that the um, change in the water supply did uh, cause the Legionnaire's outbreak. And ultimately, we were able to attribute about 80% of the cases could be attributed to the change in the water supply. So, just to follow up, um, you know, the lead service lines, they do remove potential lead exposure. That's not all of them. Uh, the point of use water filters, they are effective and we can use those to quantify lead exposure. And finally, um, the Legionnaires disease outbreak certainly played a major role in um, the number of, um, or the, the change in water supply played a major role in the case of Legionnaires disease. So with that, I will and, uh, and it's been around since uh, 2005. Um, a little bit on, on, on the, uh, my background also, I spent 10 years uh, before I came to Wayne uh, at, uh, at the Space Center in Houston with uh, Lockheed Martin. And I, one of your uh, <clears throat> astronauts actually met uh, Kalpana Chawla and, and uh, you know, right before her, her, uh, her uh, 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 actually first mission uh, up in space and, uh, and so forth. So some of my robotics work uh, extends from, from uh, the space center there. So, uh, and I'll show you some of that work also uh, uh, down the line. Uh, I also spent uh, three years in the neurosurgery department at Wayne, uh, where we developed image guidance and neurosurgical robotics applications. So I think uh, those two uh, uh, areas feed nicely into this lab work. So what I want to show you first is um, here's the uh, front end of the Da Vinci system that we have in the lab. And uh, what you see here is um, uh, what you see here is uh, the uh, a hand controller being controlled by uh, a, 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 you know, a surgeon or, or actually a, one of our test cases here. In the background, we analyze all the tool movements and, and figure out uh, some automation kinds of capability. So right now when the surgeon does surgery, he has to both or he or she has to both control the tools that they're manipulating as well as the camera. So we wanted to, one of the research projects uh, of several 
um, uh, we wanted to analyze the movements and figure out can the camera move automatically. So the environment we use is Ubuntu, uh, we use robot operating system and we use uh, Python and C++ and, and sort of hardware oriented languages uh, in, our, in our work here. So you can see that uh, th this is analyzed. Now this here is a 3D model of the Da Vinci system. You can see the robot arms here model. These are the two arms that are placed inside of the uh, patient. And this purple one in the middle is the camera arm. So um, we can simulate all our work ahead of time. And you can see that uh, uh, the, the real movements are, are duplicated. Now, this here is what the surgeon would see. So you can see that they can manipulate the tools and and are able to pick up uh, different things. But the, the key thing to analyze, to, to see here is the camera movement is automatic. So as the tools are being moved, the system is intelligent enough to know where to place the camera for optimal movement. You can see that it's, it's moving around and as, as the uh, person is doing a, a simple operation. This, by the way, is a training operation. This is the actual robot uh, moving on the, on the patient's bed. You can see that this is the tool on the left and right, and this is the camera camera tool in the middle. And the camera tool, the camera is autonomous, so it uh, the surgeon doesn't have to move uh, or worry about moving it, uh, and so forth. Another, I have several Indian students. Uh, uh, this is Vim. Uh, she graduated with her master's and is out now working out in industry. But she worked on a project where a uh, head-mounted display could be added to the Da Vinci system. So here's the front end of the Da Vinci. And um, as so as she moves her head back and forth, this is the camera view, um, the, uh, the, the, the camera inside of the, the Da Vinci also moves. So it feels like you're present inside of somebody's uh, body, you know, doing a, a, a sort of a, um, uh, an operation. And uh, this is a simul this, this shows uh, how the, um, the, this shows, let me push this down. Oops, where'd it go? Um, sorry about that. Okay, so I'm just gonna play. So this shows as we move the uh, head-mounted display, um, we move the head-mounted display here, um, the camera arm inside of the Da Vinci also moves, okay? Uh, the other area that we are working on is augmented reality and visualization. So as I told you, I started in the neurosurgery department, we developed a system where you can overlay CT scans and MRI scans directly on top of the video view. So this is a robot arm that uh, you can move around and the CT scan is displayed directly on the video scene. So um, <clears throat> as somebody you know, highlights a particular area, that model now becomes part of the 3D model of the, uh, that is overlaid. And uh, so you can see a lot of visualization and uh, uh, aids to help the uh, um, help the surgeon during uh, neurosurgery. Okay, last two areas I wanted to just cover, and the whole laboratory is remote teleoperation. So we also have two more projects. One is a military-related uh, project, and I'll show you here. These are ground robots that are on on the on the on the floor here, being controlled by a human operator, telerobotically. And uh, we also have you'll see here. A drone, so the drone is also controlled by the human, and you and they are able to control the robots and visualize the drones uh, through through this uh, through this interface. So I'm not going to obviously go into the details of that, but there's a lot of human robot interaction research that is done uh, using these kinds of systems. Okay, um, the last project, just a few seconds, is uh, uh, we were funded by NASA for about ten years. And we actually implemented this system at the Space Center in Houston, where this augmented reality technology can be used to uh, help the, the astronaut navigate the robot. So for instance, here, these uh, augmented cues are, are overlaid onto the robot arm, and it becomes like a 3D uh, navigation system or 3D GPS system uh, for the astronaut as they, as they manipulate the robot. So you can see that, okay, you have to move the robot arm down this blue uh, line, and once you reach there, you might rotate it so you can see the augmented reality cue there, uh, which allows them to rotate the arm and uh, avoid obstacles and, and, and create a robotic path that is um, you know, free of all of these uh, obstacles. So 
this gives you an idea of the different uh, uh, projects and they're all related in the sense that it's uh, tele-robotic uh, uh, operations, whether it's in military or, or medical or, or even NASA projects. And uh, I wanted to just tell you that uh, there, is, there is a website uh, you, can, you can go to. Um, and uh, in addition, um, I forwarded um, to, the, uh, uh, to, to the organizers um, uh, two booklets. One is a booklet that describes, and I'm not going to go through it, this is, you can look at it in leisure, but this describes um, the uh, electrical and computer engineering program, all the different facets of it uh, that, that um, you, you, can, you can look at that uh, uh, at your leisure. The other thing I've forwarded you is a, um, a brochure of the laboratory itself, so you can uh, look at the Da Vinci hardware in detail, uh, what are the different projects? And these are all clickable links to videos if you're interested in, in knowing a little bit more about uh, you know, the VR project or the record and playback or the auto camera project, uh, a breast cancer detection project, et cetera. So that's all available to you. You guys can uh, uh, look at that uh, uh, at your leisure, okay? Uh, and uh, with that, uh, uh, I guess I will, uh, I will hand over the floor to uh, Dr. Abel Sari, thank you again for uh, having me. It was really uh, a pleasure to uh, to participate in this conference. Uh, thank you, thank you, Dr. Abilash, sir, for your very enlightening session. I must say, sir, that your session is very much mesmerizing and amazing. I also express my deepest gratitude towards you for showing beautiful visuals of how the technology can be amazingly utilized to save lives. I once again thank you, sir, for your enlightening session. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I'll, I'll hand over the session to uh, Dr. Ramoli Uh Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Gaurav, uh, for uh, this wind-up. Uh, we are now fortunate uh, to have Shraddha Shingari, a Recruitment Advisor, India Office of International Programs, Wayne State University, Detroit. Uh, she will talk about the study opportunities and research facilities at uh, Wayne State University. So I welcome on behalf of Yashwantrao Chavan College of Engineering uh, to you, Shraddha. Uh, please over to you. Thank you so much, everyone. And uh, thank you so much, Dr. Sean, Dr. Abhilash, and Dr. Ivan, and uh, the entire team of YCW to give us this opportunity to be able to speak uh, about ourselves and discuss the research-oriented approach that Wayne State University has. Um, so a quick, uh, you know, um, I will say a story about how I and Amoli and I we met. So I went to YCWE last year for the in-person session and it was a commendable session. I mean, so many students there. So I approached uh, Dr. Zare, sir, and then he connected me to Amoli and then, you know, this all of that connection led to this, and I'm so happy with this connection. I'm looking forward to doing something more than this in the future. So without wasting any time, I am not going to be discussing the technical or technicalities of the programs here. I'm simply going to be talking a little bit about Wayne State University as a university and uh, uh, basically the admissions requirements in general. So uh, this, I understand that this session is a very uh, technical session or technology-focused session of that talks about uh, the programs, uh, you know, that is offered at the College of Engineering, right, somewhere, pretty much. But uh, it is for the students who are uh, basically thinking about the non-technical programs as well. Along with College of Engineering or the programs offered at Col of, uh, College of Engineering, we also offer the programs, that, you know, that is into business or programs that I, I would categorize those programs as non-technical programs. So because this session is focusing on engineering, please uh, do not think that college just offers the engineering oriented programs. We have the non-technical programs as well. And to find out more about those kind of programs, And it offers 360 plus programs in the technology and non-technology field, has almost has 13 colleges. 
and about 26,000 plus students studying on campus right now at Wayne State. And uh, now uh, narrowing down uh, my talk a bit on COE, which is College of Engineering. So uh, at our College of Engineering or the programs offered there, most of our programs, interestingly, does not have GRE as a mandatory requirement. So uh, if you have taken the GRE, it's good. You can report your score to us and you'll have added advantage for sure. But if you have not taken the GRE, then, then also you can go ahead and apply to our program. Most of our programs does not have a GRE requirement except for one or two programs. And then specifically, if there is something in your mind you want to talk to me about after the session, feel free to reach out to me. I can ask somebody to share my details with you after this webinar. So uh, that's pretty much what's mandatory in our application process is uh, that we need a minimum of uh, 79 IBT in TOEFL, which is English language proficiency test. And if you take IELTS, 6.5. If you take Duolingo, 125. So in short, English language proficiency test score is a mandatory requirement for us. For, in fact, everyone who comes from a non-native English speaking country just to ensure that you will not struggle with the communication or the language at Wayne State University, or for that matter, in the United States, right? Uh, because you're not just coming to, or, you know, uh, to, to uh, get an exposure of uh, the campus, but you will have an exposure to outside the campus things as well. So we want to ensure that you're not struggling with the basic communication at least. So that's uh, what that is mandatory. Uh, now, uh, Talking about uh, the admissions for fall 21, we are accepting applications for fall 21 intake. We, our deadline is rolling, which means the earlier you submit your application, the better it gets, because we do not wait for the deadline to pass and then start off our review. Our review process is as such that as soon as we get the admission uh, application, we start off with the review as early as possible. So that way, I would suggest if you have already decided that you are going to United States for your master's and if you have zeroed down to Wayne State University or say Wayne State is one of your uh, the universities to apply to, please start off the application. Do not push it towards the end because you are an international student. You will have to keep uh, the, the buffer time for the visa process as well because you never know how many slots would be available and if it's uh, you are struggling to get the slots later as well because of uh, the volatile kind of situation right now. So please start with the application. And if you want my help in order to finalize the program or you need more information that is very program specific or your question specific, you can reach out to me later for that. And I'll be sure to drop an email to each one of you after this uh, webinar with further details on the university, further details on the admission requirements and programs that it offers. So quickly about the scholarships. So we have limited merit-based scholarships as well um, that we offer to uh, the master's level students, but uh, that is called a merit-based scholarship. And there is no separate application for that scholarship. It's just you simply apply and the tuition fee is uh, waived, sorry, your application fee is waived. So you apply free of cost, not paying anything because the fee for fall 21, the uh, application fee for fall 21 is waived off. And then once you are admitted to the program, that's when you get more details from us on the scholarship in terms of what scholarship you can apply, how you can apply, and what is the deadline. So in short, nothing from your side needed from uh, nothing needed from your side not to be considered for the scholarship. It's just the application. Once you are admitted, we will reach out to you with more details on the scholarship and uh, uh, the deadline of that scholarship. So uh, that's that's pretty much about Wayne State and the programs that we offer. I think you already have a broad idea that Wayne State is a very research-oriented university because you have spoken a lot about research, and these these are you know these are just you know I would say I, I can't I cannot even say you know how much there's going on. It's just an example of what we do, how we do it. That Dr. Sean Evan and uh, you know Dr. Abhilash are talking about. There's so much that's ongoing on campus. And the best way to figure out what's happening there is by, you know, referring to the website, going to the website and find out more. And what research have already taken place, what research are, you know, going to be taking place on campus or, you know, is in the agenda. And, uh, yeah, so uh, that's pretty much from my side. Uh, thank you so much again, Amoni, for this opportunity. And over to you. Uh, yes, uh, thank you so much, uh, Shraddha. 
uh, for uh, taking the efforts and uh, bringing uh, Dr. Ivan, Dr. Abhilash, and Dr. Sean here uh, to share uh, what are the different research avenues at the Department of the Civil and uh, Electronics and Electrical Engineering at WSU. Uh, really, it was a great experience that uh, how the lab is developed up to uh, just to learn what is the flint crisis analysis as a small model that we have saw just uh, now in the presentation uh, and as well as the vinci robot which is uh, really a very very uh, advanced and good topic which we can learn and which is also useful for the mankind also nowadays uh, if we are considering the contactless uh, operations and all there definitely it will help and uh, students will also uh, take interest in uh, these areas so thank you so much uh, shraddha uh, for bringing us with uh, very nice uh, presentations uh, through the uh, experienced well experienced uh, experts so now towards the end of the session uh, i would uh, just uh, like to take up the question and answers uh, from the audiences uh, I could see in the participants uh, that a few participants have raised the hand. Uh, so please, uh, can you please unmute yourself and ask the questions? Uh, I can see Snehal Kamre. Uh, can they uh, unmute themselves, Shraddha? I will have to unmute. Yeah, I can see them. Uh, ah, yes, please. Or you may uh, write down your questions uh, in the chat box. She can talk now. She can talk uh, that, now. Huh. Okay. Uh. She'll have to unmute. Uh, Snehal Kame, please uh, put yourself and uh, ask the question. Uh, Vishali Mende. Any other question from audience, please? Uh, sir, uh, uh, I have one question to Dr. Abhilash Pandey, sir. Uh, sir, if a student, any student want to work on the uh, DVNG kind of uh, robotic analysis, okay, uh, in the India, how he should uh, move ahead and how he should look for the topic as his research? Uh, specifically working in India, right? That's what you're saying, not, not coming yes, over yes. here. Uh, so one of, the, one of the nice ways is, is to uh, get some fundamental knowledge in... Uh, in robotics, there might be some robotics courses at your university, uh, you know, kinematics and dynamics of, of robotics, uh, uh, learning programming languages like C, C++ and Java, and also knowing about the electronics and hardware. I think that that's a good start. Uh, in, in particular, uh, the Da Vinci system has a, uh, a very nice, freely available um, uh, a simulation system that, that you can download. And if you, if you learn this operating system, it's called robot operating system, uh, you can basically try to co uh, communicate with the model and, and move it. So, so giving, getting all these basic uh, uh, information and, and skills, uh, I think that that would be a very helpful, helpful topic. And when you, when you do come here, you know, you've got to hmm. take up maybe some courses in uh, robotics. I, I, I teach a couple of courses, uh, robotic systems one and two, which are graduate level courses, which you know uh, I'll give you more details in 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 this in this research area. Yeah. Uh, the other one thing I might add is uh, Google Scholar is excellent. So you you look up uh, you know research papers in this in this field, any field that you're very interested in, and try to dig into some of the review papers and 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 that, that kind of thing. So that's my okay. advice. And okay, and then the student, if uh, they want to have certain uh, small two to three weeks uh, research internship at WSE for this Da Vinci, how should a student should approach 
the university. Is there that possibility? Um, well, every summer I run, I do run a, uh, a, a two week program for high schoolers, but uh, you know, I've never tried it with, uh, with graduate uh, students. Uh, but I would welcome, you know, if, 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 you, if you can figure out a way to get here and, and uh, 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 work with me on a couple of weeks or two, you know, like a month uh, uh, internship, uh, I think we can arrange it. Maybe uh, Dr. Abruski can say, or Dr. Uh, Mac, Mac Miller can, can say a few words on that too. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, we will definitely look uh, forward uh, towards this, that uh, mm -hmm. the interested students will definitely, we will approach to you after the webinar also. Okay. So I have a one question, should I ask, sir? Yep. Uh, so basically, myself, uh, Dr. Zade, and uh, if you people permit us, very soon we are going to organize one international conference at YCCE. And uh, if you permit us, can you uh, give your name as an advisory board of our uh, in that conference on the leaflet? I, I don't see any reason why not. If you could forward, uh, you know, some some more information on what, yeah, yeah. Of course, what the topics of the conference is, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and whether we would be, you know, expert in that. <laughs> <laughs> also, we are expecting that you should uh, uh, encourage our, our, us as well as our students to deliver such a lecture in future also. So we are expecting the positive response from your side. Your, your your expertise on, on on hosting these things very nice but we may say that it is a, one of the positive side of covid pandemic so we people are come to close with the help of virtual platform <laughs> uh, okay further uh, i call upon again dr apl zade principal dmitr varda uh, for a formal vote of thanks over to you uh, zade sir Okay, the last part remains, sir. First of all, on behalf of YCC and the team, I, Prasanna Zhade, thanks to, first of all, Dr. Ivan, sir, who grace us with his presence and the guidance. Thank you once again, sir. Also, we are quite fortunate to have today's session, Dr. Sean, sir, for sharing his uh, research work on the uh, water crisis, as well as I sincerely thank to Dr. Abhilesh Pandya for showing the remote surgery. That is the way the research work is carried out. With these uh, videos, I think so. We, our students will get, and faculty also will get some innovative ideas and they can work on this. And expecting in your future, if our students are doing something, work on this topic, definitely we are expecting a support from you people or team of Wayne State University. Of course, Wayne State University, as uh, Shraddha said, it's a 150 plus years old. Of course, it has a big, long history. And therefore, uh, always uh, we try to take a uh, benefit of that. Last but not the least, I personally thanks to Shraddha ma'am for making today's unique webinar successful. Ma'am, whole credit goes to you and Amuli. And uh, your constant support, your encouragement, makes this program a grand success. So the way you explain the admission process, definitely our students wants to take admission and many of our students already pass out from your, your uh, university. Our principal, Dr. Wage, his son, and a few more our faculties, uh, uh, daughters and sons, they pass out from your university and uh, they are doing quite well in the uh, US. So, more students wants to come, but uh, I, as I told you, as I discussed, can you sign one MOU in coming days? No doubt, it takes some time. 
and uh, with that mou we can encourage our students if you go to the van state university you will get these are the benefits and uh, faculty is also uh, may come uh, for their postdoc or for the phd purpose i think uh, that is enough from my side once again a big thank you to one and all uh, team usa as well as the team ycc thanks amoli and shraddha ma'am to making this today's webinar successful thank you thanks a lot uh, thank you thank you dhade sir uh, and thank you all for sparing your valuable time and joining us today so i once again thank you shraddha uh, ma'am abilas sir shan sir and irwan sir and i also thank uh, dr pl zhade and uh, dr up waghe uh, for joining us for today's uh, session so thank you all your participants for joining us so thank you so much i declare the session is over now thank, thank you, you so much yeah i really thank appreciate bye. Thank bye. You. bye 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 good day sir good day sir thanks to all thank you thank sir you. thank you sir